Hi everyone, welcome to a new video. I hope you're all doing very well. Today's video will be very chatty and cozy because I will basically show you the books that I am planning to bring with me to my summer holidays because during the last few days of July I will not be home, I will go on holidays with my family and of course I will need to bring some books with me and today we are going to make some big decisions and hard decisions because I have about two weeks of holidays or so and I of course want to bring a lot of books with me um, I do have a few buddy reads planned for that time which I will of course prioritize I will tell you all of them and show you which books I would like to bring with me I will try and limit myself maybe to six books or seven I don't know if I can do that, we'll see, but meanwhile I will also be answering a few questions that you asked me on Instagram, I thought this would make for a very cozy video, so hopefully you will enjoy it. By the time you're watching this video I probably am on holiday already, but I do have a few videos pre-scheduled, so you will have a lot of content anyway, hopefully, so this video is just a little catch-up on all the books that I'm gonna try and read during this month, hopefully, so. Right now we are sitting at this area because it is where I keep my Penguin English Classics and I need a book from this collection because I am planning to buddy read it. Let's see where it is. I never know exactly. It should be this one, I think, maybe? Yes. Okay. So the first book I'm going to bring with me is North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell because I will be buddy reading this one with Lucy and Sarah. We are planning to start it during the last couple of weeks of July, so of course I need to bring this one. It's one that I have been meaning to read for a long time. It is a richly dramatic novel which features one of the most original and fully rounded female characters in Victorian fiction, Margaret Hale. It shows how, forced to move from the country to an industrial northern town, she develops a passionate sense of social justice and a turbulent relationship with mill owner John Thornton. So this is a love story, I would say, and I do think I'm going to enjoy it a lot. I keep hearing amazing reviews about this book and I am so excited to buddy read it with my friends, of course. So that's the first one to come with me. We are one book down. Let's see how many I end up actually bringing. <laughs> I'm sure I will bring too many, but anyhow, let's answer a few questions before moving on to the next one. I'm gonna try and answer all of them, hopefully I don't miss any, but the first one is which Portuguese authors, two or three, would you recommend? Okay, so that's perfect because I'm also close to my Portuguese books actually, so... The first author I recommend is Esat Queiroz. He does a lot of books that criticize Portuguese society during the 18th century and they are absolutely brilliant. A lot of the things he says still apply to nowadays and he has this very rough and sarcastic sense of humor to approach serious topics without diminishing their importance. So. I think he is a good introduction to Portuguese literature in general if you are looking to read some Portuguese classics. I also have to recommend, of course, Fernando Pessoa because he is my absolute favorite. This is one of my favorite books. It is called Livro do Desassossego or The Book of Disquiet. I have mentioned it a couple of times on my channel, but it is one of the first books that truly had a huge impact on me. Fernando Pessoa is not <laughs> he's not just an author, he is an entire universe for you to explore because he did create multiple personalities. He wrote under different names to express different types of feelings and I love all of them, honestly, but this book particularly, I think it is so stunning. Um, it is a collection of random thoughts that he has when he goes through the streets of Lisbon and it really stuck with me um, ever since I read it when I was quite young. I cannot remember my age exactly, but I must have been around 12 or 13, I would say, um, and I just adore this book and all of Fernando Pessoa's works. And finally, I will also recommend José Saramago, though I think this is the hardest one for you to get into. I mean, I wouldn't know about the English translation, I'm not sure if they changed anything about his writing style, but usually it is not the easiest to get into. However, his ideas and the themes he explores are brilliant. This book that I'm holding, it is called Ensaio sobre Skyde. I believe in English it is called Blindness and it is incredible. I will not say anything about it because 
because I, I think it, it is one of those books where you need to be surprised by the plot and what you are getting yourself into but let's say it is a bit of a dystopian novel um, I definitely need to live with this one it has been ages but I love it and I do love José Saramago's books um, just know it's definitely not for everyone but if you are planning to try maybe some of his works I would say this is a good place to start What's your favorite makeup? Um, if you mean makeup items, just in general, I do love my eyeliner, which is funny because currently I'm not actually wearing any, but usually it is my favorite, it is my go-to look. I don't wear a lot of makeup apart from eyeliner and lipstick and sometimes um, mascara as well. I don't use anything else, so I would say out of those three, my favorite is eyeliner, then lipstick, then mascara, yes. <laughs> All right, I think we can move on to the next book. Like I said, I will be prioritizing my buddy reads, so let's go to one of the upper shelves for me to grab the next one. Here we are, and I am about to grab the stunning book. Oh my gosh, okay, let's see. It is The Vanishing Half by Brit Bennett. I am also going to be buddy reading this one in the second half of July with Serena. This one has been on my TBR for ages. I, again, keep hearing amazing things about it and I'm really looking forward to finally reading it. Let's go down again so I can sit and talk to you. <laughs> but I think this one is about two sisters. They are both black, but one of them passes as white. And so they end up having very different realities, very different lives. And I do think it is a bit of a character study when it comes to their identities and their own struggles and everything. It sounds so good. I believe it is what you call literary fiction, I guess. Um, I need to take this jacket off. I don't think I will bring it. Also, the color is stunning. <laughs> but yes, this is my other buddy read that I have planned. I actually... Do I have any more for July? I don't think I have more buddy reads for July. Actually, let me check. <laughs> I don't think so. I do have a few planned for summer in general, but July more specifically, I think these are the only two. However, I will have to, of course, bring our Dark Academics book pick because it is our pick for June and July. So I will have to read it by the end of this month. So let's go and grab it. It should be somewhere around here. I would say it is this one. Yes, it is. Okay, <laughs> there we go. This is our book pick for June and July, The Goldfinch by Donna Tart. It says, aged 13, Theo Decker, son of a devoted mother and an absent father, miraculously survives a catastrophe that otherwise tears his life apart. Alone in New York, he is taken in by the family of a wealthy friend. Theo is tormented by longing for his mother and down the years he clings to the thing that most reminds him of her, a small captivating painting that ultimately draws him into the criminal underworld. I'm very intrigued by this one. Donna Tartt's books tend to have some very mixed opinions, I feel like. Out of all of us in the Dark Academics book club, I am the only one who still hasn't read The Secret History, so I really don't know what to expect of this one, because I don't know what Donna Tartt's writing style looks like or how she explores all the themes in her stories, so I am quite intrigued. It sounds very mysterious and Dark Academia-ish, of course, so this is our pick for the book club, and and I will be sure to finish it in July, of course, because we will be having our live show. It should be either at the end of July or beginning of August. We will, of course, let you know as soon as possible. As for questions, we have something you learned the hard way about school, work, hobbies, etc. Oh, that's a hard one. Let me think. Something I learned the hard way. Um, okay, I just thought of something. It is a little... <laughs> It's a little sad, I guess, but I think um, college, my experience at college was not the one that I was hoping for, and that's okay. Everything that I know nowadays of the fields that I am truly passionate about, I learned either on my own or at a different school, because I did go to college, I studied law for about two years and a half, and I gave up, because it really wasn't for me. And then I went and studied photography, I had my bachelor degree and everything, but I feel like I learned nothing as well. I don't think my experience at college was 
good overall, which is a shame because I'm someone who does love learning and studying, but it just wasn't fulfilling enough. So I am very grateful for the fact that I kept studying music during all those years and I still am and that brings me so much joy and it also challenges me as a person and as an artist as well I guess. I always have a hard time calling myself an artist because I feel like it's one big title that I'm not worthy of <laughs> but I guess that's the reality and then for my um, part-time job as a video editor, I also learned everything by myself and I am also a tutor right now, which again, I've never done before. I never studied to be a teacher or a tutor or anything. I just learned it um, by myself, I guess, and everything else too. I just try to learn everything by myself, I guess, and that's fine. I just wish maybe that I either that I hadn't gone to college or that I hadn't given it so much important as if it would define my entire future because obviously it didn't. If I hadn't gone to college, I feel like I would be at the exact same place. So what I want to do now is to keep just learning random things but also take a different bachelor degree for nothing really other than my own personal satisfaction. So I would love to take one of those degrees that you think are not good for your future because you will either be a teacher with them or you will not have a job. But honestly, that's okay with me because getting a job through those degrees is not my goal. So I would love to study something like philosophy or history or languages or even something related to music as well because it is a whole world and I never want to stop studying music, not really. So I might do that. Um, the world is filled with possibilities and I just wish people or rather that I didn't give as much importance to a degree when in reality there's so much that you can do in your life with other means as well. So I guess I learned that the hard way because it was something that gave me a lot of anxiety, especially giving up on the law school, which was a very safe path for me, um, or at least much safer than following any type of arts. That gave me a lot of anxiety and it was extremely difficult, but it was the right choice. And looking back, I regret nothing. So I think that's one of the biggest examples I can give you. That was a very long answer. I apologize. <laughs> But hopefully I answered your question. I know it is open for interpretation. There are so many things you can learn the hard way in life and there are other things that I also did, but those are a little more personal. So I thought I would share something that is related to my professional path, I guess, because I also think it is something that a lot of people can relate to. A lot of my friends, for instance, feel the same. So do you like living in Lisbon? Yes, I love it. It is a beautiful city. We have pretty much everything here, including good weather, good food. Um, it is a very good location. I love my city. It is one of my favorites in the world, not to be biased or anything, but I really love it. I would like to live someplace else one day, um, but for now, I just love it here and wouldn't change it for anything. So, okay, let's do one more. How have you improved your English speaking skill for YouTube? Um, First of all, thank you, because if you are saying that, it means that you think I'm somewhat good at speaking English, so thank you. It is something that, honestly, I still struggle with a little bit. Um, I keep thinking I make mistakes all the time, but the reality is I've always had English classes ever since I was five years old, which was, of course, a big help. And fortunately, most of my English teachers were very good. Um, and apart from that, I also learned from watching a lot of movies and a lot of TV shows. And especially when I was a kid, me and my brother used to watch a lot of cartoons in English with no subtitles. So we didn't understand anything they were saying, but that also helped us to, through the context of the cartoons, I guess, we sometimes understood a few words and expressions. Um, I mean, we started guessing what they must mean, and then eventually we started realizing that we were right. And so that was also a good tool for us. Um, also video games. I, I remember <laughs> a story that I always remember is that I had this DVD of Atlantis, the movie from Disney, one of my favorites. Um, my mom got us the DVD. The main menu was in English. 
and I didn't understand anything that was there. And I even complained to my mom that I wanted the DVD in Portuguese, otherwise I will not understand anything. But it did have the option for you to change the language, both the speaking language and the subtitles as well. Um, it did have that option, I just didn't know where to get to it in the menu, and so what my mom did was you have this option, it is in English right now, but I want you to try and change it to Portuguese because you can do that through the little buttons um, when you go in the menu. And at first I felt very desperate <laughs> because I really didn't understand any of the words that were there, um, but I kept trying all the different options that it had and that's how I learned that subtitles meant um, legendas <laughs> in Portuguese. That's also how I learned how to say play movie and yeah, subtitles, speaking languages, options, extras. So everything that was in the main menu of the movie, I had to learn all of those words. I went to the dictionary and I saw what all of them meant. So that was a big help for me too. Those little tricks that you have as a kid, I think they really help you. There are so many ways of learning languages and why not take the fun parts and watch some of your favorite movies play games, watch TV shows, all of that. They are such a big help and they were for me. Um, but yes, other than that, I've always had English classes anyway. So I always had people around me helping me with that, fortunately. So that's how I got here. Still making mistakes, which is fine. <laughs> Again, a very long answer. I apparently am very rambly today. <laughs> okay, another question and then we can move on to another book. How to not get overwhelmed and take your time with what you read, enjoying it. I feel like nowadays there's this pressure of reading as fast as you can. And I have to admit, I made that mistake as well when I started this channel. I thought I had to read at least 10 books a month, otherwise I wouldn't be able to make videos or I wouldn't be able to provide um, interesting content for you or anything. And so I started focusing on the quantity of books rather than the quality, which is so silly. And what helped me was to try and remember why I love reading in the first place and why I want to read a certain book. Um, what is it that makes reading so pleasant to me? And so focus on that. Anytime you grab a book, just really look at it and try and create a real connection with it. Um, this might sound silly, I know, but really think about what it is that makes you so passionate about reading. Um, also, if you're not feeling like reading, that's completely fine. Just don't read. <laughs> Whether you read one book a month or three or 10 or 20, or if you read nothing for months, that's completely okay. That's up to you. Just make sure that whenever you are reading, appreciate your time doing that because books are such wonderful things they are stories for you to experience so really take your time with them you know they will not go anywhere there's no rush whatsoever if you're not enjoying a book feel free to just not finish it if you are in a reading slump that's okay too i mean it will pass but while it doesn't explore different hobbies as well you know sometimes when you explore and try different things it makes you appreciate even more everything that you did before those as well because you gain this new passion for life as you experience and so everything just gains a new light i guess um so just take your time you know and if you do have a time frame to read your book um such as if you ordered it from the library and you need to return it or if it is a mandatory read for school of course sometimes those situations can happen but don't let that affect your love for reading because because that is such a wonderful thing and each book has something unique and special that they can bring you so just embrace it and enjoy your journey you know I don't think that was helpful at all but it is what I try to do at least so just take your time don't rush into it and remind yourself of why you love reading so much I think those are my main three tips I would say 
Okay, just to get back to the books, so far we have three. We have North and South, The Vanishing Half, and The Goldfinch. I just checked, I don't have any more buddy reads for now. I do have, of course, my book pick for the Tea Leaves book club as well, but that I can also read in August because it is our pick for July and August, so that's fine. I do have some audiobooks that I will also bring with me, mainly The Hobbit by J.R. Tolkien because I will be reading it for the Fellowship of the Read Along and also the Pickwick Papers because I am trying to catch up on the Dickens vs. Tolstoy book club and that was one of their picks so I'm listening to that one as well. Let's see, I'm gonna try and pick maybe three more and I just thought of this one. It is called The Wonder by Emma Donahue. I have been very intrigued by this one so it is definitely an option. But let's look for a few more. Oh, I also have this one. This is the Animal Folk Tales of Britain and Ireland. It is stunning, but I think I'm gonna save this one for autumn. What else? I don't think anything from this shelf because these are all thrillers. Um, maybe I can bring another classic. Let's see. Maybe one of those secondhand classics. I really want to read these ones. So, ooh, actually, I might bring this one because... After reading Middlemarch, I basically want to read everything that George Eliot has written, so this could be an option. It is quite short as well. Yes, okay, this one. Then maybe one from this shelf. Let's see what we have here. Um, the House at Riverton. Oh, I think this is a mystery as well. I think I'm gonna read it during fall eventually. This is our Tea Leaves book club pick that I mentioned previously. It is The Maidens but I will be reading it in August. I'm also planning to buddy with this one with Hillary. This is How to Do Nothing, um, but I think we might buddy with this one in August maybe as well, um, because we still haven't settled a date or anything, so I'm gonna wait a little bit. I might bring a non-fiction. I think that would make sense. Oh, maybe this one. I know why the cage bird sings. Um, let's see. Mm. Maybe this one or this one, Invisible Women. I'm a little torn between these two. Um, let's put them here for now and see what we got. I think I'm going to definitely bring this one and this one too, because it is quite short and it sounds like a cute summer read, maybe. <laughs> And then I think I'm gonna bring this one as well because it was a gift from my mom and I have been meaning to read this one ever since she got it for me, so I think this one. Let's quickly see what these all are about. So first I have Invisible Women by Caroline Criado Perez. It says, exposing data bias in a world designed for men. It says, from government policy and medical research to technology, workplaces and the media, Invisible Women reveals how, in a world largely built for and by men, we are systematically ignoring half the population, often with disastrous consequences. She brings together, for the first time, an impressive range of case studies, stories and new research from across the world, that illustrate the hidden ways in which women are forgotten and the profound impact this has on us all. Um, I know my mom really liked this one, so I'm really looking forward to reading it. I might try and find the audiobook for this one as well, so we'll see. Then I've got Silas Marner by George Eliot, again because I just loved her writing in Middlemarch and it was such a good character study, so I'm hoping that this one is as well. Um, it is one of her most admired and loved works. It tells the sad story of the unjustly exiled Silas Marner, a handloom linen weaver of Ravelow in the heartland of England, and how he is restored to life by the unlikely means of the orphan child Epi. Um, it is a tender and moving tale of sin and repentance set in a vanished rural world and holds the reader's attention until the last page as Epi's bonds of affection for Silas are put to the test. Um, I couldn't be more intrigued by this one. It gives me sort of Heidi vibes. I know that the story doesn't have anything to do with that, but 
you know, a bond between a child and an older man. And I'm guessing this will be so moving. And um, oh my gosh, I'm so excited to read this one. Plus, I really love this cover and I'm so glad I found it in a thrifted bookstore. And then, of course, we have Wonder by Emma Donahue, which says it is about a young English nurse who arrives at this Irish village on a strange mission. 11-year-old Anna O'Donnell is said to have eaten nothing for months but appears to be thriving miraculously. Lip's job is simple, to watch the girl and uncover the truth. Okay, I don't, I, <laughs> that's enough for me. I do not want to know anything else. I find that sometimes when I read the full synopsis, I get some spoilers. So this sounds quite intriguing and mysterious as well. Plus, I love this cover so much. So yes, those are my six books. Let's answer some more questions before I have the urge to pick another one. <laughs> what does your perfect day look like? Oh my gosh, that can have so many variations, you know, because I love doing so many different things. It depends if you're talking about a day on my own or a day spent with friends and family. But in general, a perfect day for me includes walking, um, mainly morning walking, reading, playing video games. <laughs> drinking a nice cup of tea, watch a movie, hang out with the people I love, even if we're not doing anything special, I really don't care about that. And then doing very simple things like smelling flowers or walking my dog or something, I don't know, it's the simple pleasures in life. I don't have a definition of what a perfect day looks like. As long as I love what I'm doing, that's perfect for me. <laughs> my mom asked, why are you so beautiful? I don't know, you made me, so I should be asking you that question. <laughs> Sarah asked, what's my favorite Disney song? Sarah, why do you hate me exactly? <laughs> I cannot, oh my gosh, I, I swear I cannot pick one. I cannot pick one, it's, it's, no, <laughs> no, it is too hard. I can tell you the one that I have been listening to the most lately, it is definitely The Colors of the Wind by Pocahontas because I feel like with everything going on in the world, people need to listen to that song more often. So I leave it at that. Lucy asks, how are you so amazing? Lucy, <laughs> you are one of the best people I've ever had the pleasure to come across. So how are you such a beautiful, inspiring person? I don't know, but you are, and I love you so much. She also asks my go-to cafe order. Oh my gosh. Um. I mean, if I could go with pumpkin spice latte, then I, I will go with that because it is my favorite. Um, but other than that, just any coffee with almond milk and cinnamon, I'm happy. <laughs> no cream though, no one needs that. If you could live in Middle Earth, what would your life look like? Oh my gosh. I would love to be, a, I know this is not possible, but I would love to be a mixture between a hobbit and an elf. I, I love the simplicity of a hobbit's life. It involves everything that I love um, because it is truly about the little details of life and the simple joys, the fact that you get to have a second breakfast or that you get to sleep in for a couple more hours or that you get to run through the fields and jump around and dance like no one's watching. That's all I want in life, basically. <laughs> but then being an elf also comes with so many possibilities. And so I don't know, I guess my life would look like loving nature every single day, caring for little creatures, little animals that come across and be friends with them. Um, just hang around with my friends as well and live a very simple, slow life while also visiting beautiful places because that's what Middle Earth is all about as well. It is absolutely, it's so whimsical and beautiful. I would visit everywhere that I could. So yes, I guess that's it. I feel like my answers are always so cheesy and predictable, but I swear I, I want nothing more in life. <laughs> Which perfume are you wearing? Right now I am wearing, oh, I can't remember the name, but it has an apple scent. I will insert a picture here. <laughs> are you studying at the moment? Yes, um, I just said that previously. I am still studying classical music and I plan to keep studying for as long as I can. It depends on the type of day I'm having. If I'm having a good day, if I am feeling cheerful, then a self-care thing to do is to read a book and drink a cup of my favorite tea. 
maybe eat some cookies as well <laughs> but sometimes when i'm feeling more stressful i also like to put all of that anxiety into video games they help me a lot so yes it depends on the day i have different defense mechanisms depending on my mood so there you go <laughs> being with my pets is always one of my favorite things as well it always helps me so there's that too favorite candle smell Ooh. I guess anything that is inspired by a forest, if it smells like trees, it is probably my favorite. Trees or flowers, anything, you name it. It cannot be too strong, it has to be fresh, um, hence why I am saying like pine trees or something, because it has a very lovely, inviting, but fresh smell as well. How do you describe smells? It's hard. <laughs> Do you have another job outside of YouTube? Um, YouTube is not my job. I wish it could be at least a part-time one, but unfortunately I'm not in that position. Um, so I do have two other jobs. I am a tutor and I am a part-time video editor, like I said previously. Hopefully one day I will also pursue music in a more professional way. Um, it is one of my dreams, but I love doing multiple things at the time. Do you like the music of Peter and the Wolf? Yes, I do. <laughs> it is actually the first time ever that I listened to a clarinet and knew what it was and I fell in love with that instrument ever since. So there you go. Okay, so when it comes to the books that I'm packing, I think those six should be enough, right? <laughs> Um, but as for audiobooks, I also remembered another one in the meantime, which is Don Quixote. I also have a physical copy, which is this one. It is stunning and I would love to bring it with me because I would like to read the physical copy as well. But it is huge. I don't think it will fit in my bag. It will be too heavy if I bring it with me. So I might just bring the audiobook, but I really want to read this one during summer. So I need to have a head start, otherwise I will not finish it. <laughs> but I was thinking I would love to bring one more book, maybe. Is that too much? It is definitely too much. <laughs> oh no, um, maybe a short book, like a short little book. I'm so indecisive. You have no idea. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's look for shorter books. Okay, one more, one more. Don't kill me. <laughs> Will I read all of these? Absolutely not, but I like having options, okay? So I just grabbed this one, it is The Railway Children by E. Nesbitt. I know absolutely nothing about this book, <laughs> like nothing at all, but it looks so pretty and perfect for summer for some reason, I don't know. It has a quote on the back, it says, don't ask me no questions and I won't tell you no lies. All right then. <laughs> I don't know, it just, it has been so long since I read a children's classic and this one has very good reviews, so I think I'm gonna bring it with me. <laughs> and those are the seven books that will come with me. Let me just grab them again. Oh my gosh, this is too much. It is definitely too much. But you know what? I'm gonna do it anyway because I don't, I don't bring a lot of clothes, for starters. I don't bring anything else with me, truly, that, that takes a lot of space. It's just books. So I think, I think it, it's fine, it's fine. I will probably only finish three of these. So you could say this is a little ridiculous, but I am, I'm, I'm bringing them. <laughs> but just to finish this video, I do have some more questions. So let's see the last ones. Again, I'm sorry if I miss any, um, Instagram deletes them after 24 hours, so I might miss a few, but I plan to do more of these videos in the future, so if I don't answer your question right now, there will be more opportunities for sure. Um, so, what do you like to do if you're not reading? Um, I guess I already answered that. I mean, I love doing so many things, including writing. I do love writing. Um, singing is the main one, I would say. Um, playing the piano, knitting and sewing, which I am terrible at. I need to improve my skills, definitely, which I haven't been doing, but it is something that I genuinely love. Um, drawing and painting, which is something that I, again, I'm terrible at, but I love it. It's very relaxing and creative. Um, and then playing video games, for sure. It has been my, my new favorite thing this year. I got back into video games and I have been loving them. So there's that. <laughs> And then, of course, I love filming and editing. I love creating content for all of you. So if that counts, then 
there's that too. If you could match your favorite book with a song that best represents it, what song would it be? Um, I, my favorite book? What is my favorite book? <laughs> oh no, um, what is my favorite book? Okay, let's pick a random one. I don't have a favorite book. I have a lot of them. I have a lot of them. <laughs> Let me grab this one. Why not? It is Dreamer's Pool by Juliet Morillier. I love everything about this book so much. If I had to match a song, probably a song by Epica, which is one of my favorite bands. I will link one of their songs in the description if I can find the one that I think fits this book best. Um, but I just love Epica because they have very long songs that usually have a balance between the singing part and also the instrumental section. And they go from being very heavy and epic, like a true epic fantasy book, but then they also switch to this very calming melody. They are clearly inspired by folklore and fairy tales and fantasy, so I think it would fit this book perfectly, any of their songs, but I'm gonna try and match one specific, so I will link that in the description of this video, but that's the one that I could think of right now. That's a hard question, a very good one though, I love that. And I think that's pretty much it for this video, so thank you for coming on this journey with me where I knew I would overpack. I always do this and then it's it's way too much, I know, but I get so excited about all the books that I want to read, so I would rather take more books than necessary and have options than not taking enough and then I don't have anything to read, so this is my final decision. <laughs> I'm gonna go and pack the rest of my things, but thank you so much for joining me today. I truly hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you are, whatever it is you are doing. I am sending you so much love and lots of hugs, and I will see you again very soon on my next video. Bye!